Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to another live stream from the workshop. Uh, today I'm going to be making a panel gauge much like this one, only a little bit smaller and a little bit fancy because I'm doing it obviously a little bit quicker. So let's have a look at the materials I'm going to be using. First of all, for the, uh, the arm or the beam, I'm going to be using this piece of mahogany. I've prepared it already. Uh, it's roughly 3 eighths of an inch thick, and about uh, 7 eighths of an inch in width, and it's roughly two, in, 2 foot long. I've also got a bit of walnut, which I'll use for the stock or the fence. That's about an inch and a quarter thick about three quarters of an inch um, wide, or oh, sorry, about an inch and a quarter wide by about three quarters of an inch thick, and it's about eight inches long. And finally, a piece of walnut again, just a little bit here that I'll use as a wedge. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be putting a mortise through the fence, then the beam will go through there, and the mortise will be wide enough to take a wedge in the side, which will just lock everything in place. Once we've done that, if there's time, I should be putting through um, a hole to hold a pencil, because uh, normally I use a pencil in here, and then we'll have some sort of uh, mechanism for locking the pencil in place. So, should be fun. Let's get started, and I'm gonna do the wedge first. Now for the wedge, um, I'm starting off with a piece which has got parallel sides on it. So I want to reduce um, in a triangular section one of the corners just to give it a wedge shape. I've decided where it's going to be and I'm going to hang over the edge of the shooting board uh, the amount that I want to take away. So when I start shooting it, the actual plane isn't going to be riding against the edge of the shooting board. It's just going to be on the bench and against the, uh, the piece of wood. I'm going to back it up uh, with a piece of MDF, make it easier to hold. And uh, it's as easy as that. So now we have a wedge. I don't know how clear that is. Um, it's shallow, uh, shallow slope on there. Uh, that will lock much better than anything steep. So now I'll mark out for the mortise, which is the next thing to do. I'm going to want it central or fairly central on the fence. It's not massively important, but uh, it's nice aesthetically. So let's just gauge. Roughly the center, and that's there. I'll use the square to make sure it comes through um, square to the face. Then I want to put the wedge in with the narrow end, just protruding enough so that if that's as tight as it goes, we can still knock it back uh, with a hammer. Then I'll take a pencil, mark the slope side in, keep the square where it was, and mark the straight side down. And then I want to square those marks around. And in getting the lighting right so you can see things, it makes it very difficult for me to see what I'm doing. We'll square those across the top and across the bottom. Now as I usually say, it'd be nice to know who we've got in, so if you can say hello in the chat, just tell us where you're viewing from as well, that's always nice to know. 
So I've squared my lines around for the ends of the mortise. One's wider than the other because we put a, a wedge in there. Now I'll take my mortise gauge. I've set that <coughs> to the width of this mortise chisel. And this mortise chisel is actually very close to what I've prepared the beam. And it may be that it'll fit once I've chopped it. If not, then we can reduce the beam very slightly in thickness. So now we just need to mark where the mortise is going to go. Just between those lines, pencil lines. Very difficult to see in this walnut. So mark that side and mark this side. There we go. And we'll take that over and start to mortise. Now, last time I was doing mortising, I was doing it in the vise because we had such a small uh, component to work with. Today, it's just about big enough that I can clamp it to the bench over a leg, which is by far a, a better approach. So I've got to put MDF underneath it just to protect the vise when I get to the final stage and I make my way right the way through. Couple of clamps. It'd be very nice if I could see a bit more clearly. I don't know if I can put a light on here without it interfering with you. And I shall put uh, my glasses on. I should have found myself a white pencil to, to mark these out with. Just grab a smaller chisel so I can clean this out.
and I'll turn that over and work from the other side. I'm trying to keep track of which side of the mortise has the slope on it so I don't do something stupid and cut too much away. Let's just have a look at who's in tonight. So, Shrenik's in, Lego Man's in, Robert's in, Andy's in. Well, good evening to you all. Just have a quick look if any of, any of you have said something like, you can't hear me or you can't see me, which would be a disaster. Shrenix at Law's Credit Ground. Oh, cool. Okay, well, it sound, it doesn't look as if anything's going wrong at the moment, which is all good news. Let's carry on with the mortise. Well, I nearly chopped it then, or started chopping it with the narrower chisel, which would have been a bit of a disaster. Although not as bad as chopping it with a wider one. I'm already through, so I just want to make this as clean as I can now. The slope side is towards me and it's um, narrowing towards the bottom. I'll just creep up gently on the edges of the mortise. Gauge my angle from the side. I've got the uh, lapel mic on tonight. I've recharged some batteries, so hopefully that will keep going. But it does mean that if I sniff or cough, you'll get a lovely reproduction of that. And <clears throat> as my voice is disappearing now, uh, you'll probably hear all that huskiness as well.
So because I know my beam's a little bit wider, any slight discrepancies in there I can clean up just by cleaning the, the sides, not something we normally do. And I've obviously caught myself somewhere, there's a little bit of blood on there. These mortise chisels are very sharp on the right angles. And it's uh, very easy to just catch yourself there. Well, I can't see where it's coming from. There, good fit. So with that on the flat side, let's just test the wedge. That's barely poking through, but uh, I think it's a little bit more clean up and that'll be ideal. And since this is just very light work, I shall put that in the vise. Get my favourite chisel and just make sure that those mortise ends are nice and clean. And I have got a tiny punch on the end of my finger, so I think it was probably a splinter rather than catching it on the chisel. So, mortise is finished, the beam 
goes in there, nice friction fit. And the wedge poking through enough so we can release it like so. Now the next thing to do, if we used it like that, let me just demonstrate. If we used it just like that on a panel, then it will rotate on the edge of the panel, which is no good at all. So what we do is we'll put a rebate in just along this edge here, which will go up to the beam and just set back a little bit so it'll hook on the edge of the panel. So let's put that rebate in. Now if you've been watching recently, you'd have seen I made a, a case for my 13050 plane, a combination plane, which I've set up here to do this rebate. So I've set the exposure, so it takes me down to the um, mortise, and I've set the depth of cut just about an eighth of an inch, maybe uh, three sixteenths, just so there's a reasonable lip across the edge of a panel. That's not seating brilliantly well. You see I've got down to the depth now, it won't cut anymore. And there's just a smidge, a wafer thin section up to the mortise, which I'm just going to take out. So let me show you that up close again. So you can see hopefully a rebate in the corner there. That will sit on, um, on a panel and it won't twist. Let's put this in here. Let's do it properly. Let's put a wedge in. So that's how it will work. So of course the next step would be to put a pencil in it. I'll just check the comments and see if anyone's uh, asking any questions. Oh, thankfully you can hear me, that's great, because if you hadn't, it would have been a bit of a, a disaster. So thanks for telling me that. Shrenix retracted a message, so I'm guessing that was probably a bit fruity. Well, it doesn't look as if there's anything too, uh, too dodgy there.
Srenik saying, does it really twist though, if you're careful? So does the twist really matter? Uh, is that anything to do with this stream? I don't know. Robert, I reckon those 13050s are a real bargain. Yeah, they are. They're not pretty. They're absolutely not pretty, um, but they work. Srenik, you don't like the molded handles. I actually find them really comfortable. I guess it just depends on hand sizes and, and finger lengths and things like that. Have I made a wooden fence for the combination plane, Srenix asked. Um, I haven't. Um, I guess the reason for that is I've got a 45, which has got a, a, a wooden fence on it. And the, I don't know if I, I told you the story about this, uh, 13050, but that was a, a bonus that came along um, for free when I, uh, when I bought a Stanley 50. So I wasn't expecting it, um, but it works quite well and I just haven't made a, a fence for it yet. Shrenix, um, does the panel gauge twist? Uh, it doesn't now it's in now I've put a rebate on the the fence of the gauge it, it won't twist round so it should be uh, should perfectly track a straight board okay well let's put this pencil in and what I'm going to do with the pencil and sorry I'm struggling with the the mirror well not a mirror image the real image in the in the video here to make sure I'm in shot but what I'm going to do here I've got a round pencil uh, anyone from Britain will recognise that as a screw fix pencil. Uh, I'm going to place that roughly inch and a half, two inches back from the end. I'm going to drill a hole that's going to be really tight for the pencil. And then I'm going to saw down past it so that we can tighten up. And to tighten it up, I'm going to put in a bolt with a knurled nut on it. So it's over to the drill press to do that. Now, I probably should have marked this for center. Like the last time I used a drill press in the live stream at night, there's very little light. I've set up a little spotlight here, but it's, it still makes it quite difficult to see. So this line I'm drawing is gonna be the, the line to saw to later on. It's also gonna be where I put this hole through for the pencil. Probably the best I can do is prick that with the brad point bit in the right place. And then start the drill. So at the moment, the pencil won't go through that. I don't know about this one. This one doesn't either. The idea is if I've cut this slot, then there'll be a little bit of spring. The pencil should go in, um, hold reasonably well, but we'll put the bolt through as well, which will really tighten it up. So when we come back here in a moment, we shall need a different bit in it. And yes, for sure, I could have done this drilling um, by hand. Maybe I should have done. Now I, I know from having checked this earlier on, this drill bit's a little bit small for the bolt. So I'll just be a little bit uh, naughty with the way I drill it. Make sure we get it up at 90 degrees as well. I'm gonna be a little bit naughty. And when I say that, what I mean is once I've drilled the hole through, I shall ride the, ride the work up and down the drill bit. If you're not comfortable doing that, then don't do it. Okay. 
So I've got my through hole. Now I know it won't fit in there, so what I'm going to do is clear the rubbish out of the bit, place it back on. Now I've got this against my body so it can't spin around. Come up and down, a little bit of twist, but only very light pressure because the flutes of a drill are not designed to to route out a slot. Hopefully that'll be enough. So let's just try the the bolt in there. And that now that goes through where is it? There we go. Yeah, that goes through now. It's it's a friction fit, but it should pull up perfectly okay. Let's just go and now rip this little line up here so that we can actually get the pencil in. And let's just show you the pencil just won't go in through there. Now, do I remember where I put my rip saw? Get it started uh, on here. Something this thin would really flex, especially with the hole in the middle as well. Be a risk of it breaking if I cut it without the support of the the bench hook. Let's just take a little bit at a time. I'm going to run out of saw plate now, so let's go and find. a bit deeper what you could also do if you wanted to ever use a pin in this gauge you could put a, a smaller hole through for a pin A little bit further down. If you do use a pin with this or, or a knife then I would definitely recommend putting a bolt either side of it so it's got that little bit extra support. So we've got a saw cut up there Actually not that straight, I don't know what I was doing. We've got the hole, there should be enough flex now to push the pencil in. Yep. Of course in use it only just extends a little way below. Probably like so. And then we can put the, uh, the bolt through. Put the knurled nut on top. And that pulls up really tight. The pencil's not coming out. Slip that into the mortise. Now let's get this the right way around. I like to have the, uh, the wedge in the right place and the right way around. 
like so. Let's do it where we've got, we can actually use it on a panel that I've got. Wedge that up. So that's now locked. Here's an example for you. Pop that on the edge. And there we have it. So there you have one uh, panel gauge made in, oh, about an hour, I guess it took me with all that going on. What am I talking an hour? Half an hour, about half an hour that took me. So um, no excuse for not having a panel gauge. I would probably adjust this wedge just a little bit so it went through a little bit further, be easier to, to knock out. But uh, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna hit the chat now and see what anyone's got to say. Please uh, make any comments and I'm still looking for suggestions. So uh, whatever you do, try and give me some suggestions. Try and keep them clean as well, that would be very handy. In fact, why don't I come round here, get myself comfy on a stool. Right, let's see what you've been saying. I'd like to know if any of you are going to build one of these. So where did I get to before? Um, a fake book and name. No, I think we've got past that. Signing the work. And the invite, uh, da 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 da. Okay, we're talking about the um, combination plane. Question It was hard to see on my phone. Have you made a wooden fence? Yeah, we did that one, didn't we? Da da da. Shrenik said, did you know you can make your own cutters for this combination plane using eighth inch steel? It's, it, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the same for most uh, combination and plow planes. I'm not sure they're particularly expensive unless you go for, you know, Hock and other specialist brands. Robert still prefers the O50C. Much easier to do, yeah. Yeah, isn't it? I'm trying to remember, the, the uh, Stanley 50's got the little grooves in the back, hasn't it, for the, um, the little lever lower and raise device, which makes it quite difficult to make your own. Lego Man's got a very Good technique for enlarging through holes very accurately. Take a slightly tapered rat tail file and turn it the whole counterclockwise. Yep, good idea. Very good idea. Probably safer than what I was doing. I think what I showed there, uh, the possibility of anything going wrong, to be honest with the size of work I was doing, the thing most likely to happen is the drill bit might break, uh, but it, it would be captured in the, in the work, so I don't think it would be dangerous at all.
Uh, Stranix talking about needing O1 steel. Yeah, excellent, good choice. What you can do, there's an awful lot of um, hard steel out there just in the environment that you can find and that will work perfectly well as an iron. Um, you'd be really quite surprised. There's loads of chrome steel out there. Uh, you could take an old spanner and just use the shafts of a spanner, cut it to the right size. And he's saying he's got to make one himself. Absolutely, that'd be nice. Shrenik's going to build one. Claudio, a little bit later. Claudio's watching the beginning of any videos next to Paul Sellers and did a lot. You mean you had Paul Sellers sitting next to you watching my beginner's videos? I don't know that he needs to watch them, but maybe he does. Absolutely my pleasure, Claudio, to, uh, to put those videos out there. And it's lovely to hear back from people to, say that, to hear that they're finding them useful. Hi to Earl in Connecticut. I think you're the only person, unless I missed it, I think you're the only one who's, who's told me where you are, which is lovely to know. Yeah, Shrenek, yeah, you're right. The, uh, the record 50 has the grooves as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Same as the Stanley. Alan G. Hello, Alan. So much better tonight. Could we have someone else to monitor questions and feed them to your earpiece? Someone else? Oh, we didn't have anyone tonight. Shrenek... Um, has done so in the past and that works quite well. I'm waiting for a little piece of kit so that I can feed his audio um, direct into the stream as well so people can hear him asking the questions. Um, so maybe that'll be something we can do in the future. Perfectly happy for anyone else who might like to be a second for Shrenik when he's not around, available. So if anyone wants to help out, do, uh, do get in touch. We work it over Messenger, so anyone who's on Facebook uh, could possibly do that. Claudio is in Berlin. So we've got Germany calling, we've got uh, the United States calling. I know some of the rest of you are in the UK, which is nice as well. Question, do I advise for any woodworking school on site for a short period of time, three months max. Um, it really depends how you learn. Um, I taught myself using books, um, a few DVDs, and uh, really just lots of practice. And to be honest, I found that the best way. I did take a um, night college course, which I think added up to about eight hours on carving and I didn't learn very much and that kind of put me off going to uh, be taught in the school environment. So um, maybe take a short course, maybe take a, a couple of days or so on a course, see how you get on with that environment. If you find it's, it's easier to learn that way, uh, then for sure uh, that will probably pay you to do a longer course. Other people will find it easier, as I did, I think, to work from um, you know, YouTube now, as, as there is YouTube videos and from books. Uh, certainly don't discount books. I, I think books, for me, are probably one of the best um, sources of learning that I've found. Our Lego man's from Holland. So Holland calling as well. Richard apparently has tuned in. That's nice to know. I didn't see Richard in the chat, but hi, Richard. Well, hopefully today has been useful. Hopefully people in the replay will have found this useful as well. Do as I say, let me know if you make one. Send me a photo. I'd love to see it. And uh, we'll do something different next time.
I've been asked to consider doing a marking gauge, so that's something, a possibility. Um, but if we can have some other ideas, that would be absolutely wonderful. So, I think uh, we'll wrap it up there and uh, hopefully see you next time. Probably be on Monday and probably six o'clock. I try to do six o'clock, although this evening's uh, 8.30 has gone quite well, so one or other of those times. Um, I'll try and get notification out 24 hours in advance. So, thanks for joining in tonight and uh, enjoy making your own panel gauge. Cheerio.